Good morning once again. My name is Megan Berstow and I'd like to welcome you to the uh, multi-state alternate assessment for the MSAA District of Columbia Test Administration Training for Test Administrators. Today's training is scheduled to last two and a half hours and I anticipate having plenty of time. At this time, I'd like everyone to be aware that the training today will be recorded in GoToWebinar and handed off to Michael Craig at the OSFE. Um, please use the chat feature to ask your questions as they arise, and we'll go ahead and pause between sections as time allows. Before we go any further on this webinar from Measured Progress, um, today we have so myself, I'm an Accessibility Assessment Specialist. Um, Riley Emmons is joining us in the role of Program Coordinator, and Sarah McCain will also be joining us as an IT Project Coordinator. The State MSAA Coordinators page has been updated for 2019 with the links for all states in the front of the Test Administration Manual. We'll be calling that the TAM as we go forward in the presentation. It can be found on the first numbered page in the TAM, and on this slide is the information for the District of Columbia specifically. Today we'll be covering a lot of material, and there will be plenty of time for your questions. We'll provide you with an overview of the MSAA program as a whole, key dates and information on who to contact for support, what's new for the 2018-19 administration, important source documents, which will become your go-to resources, the training requirements and responsibilities of test administrators or TAs, and the technology requirements of the MSAA system and supports and features of the platform. Following that more general information, we'll dive into how to access the MSAA system. Then we will cover what must happen before testing, how to navigate the system, again with some visual aids, and the requirements for after testing. We will then cover testing integrity and review next steps. In order to make this administration a positive experience for our students, we have built in a lot of support for TAs, and we will cover that information as well. It's a lot of information, but again, we'll take it slow, and like I said, there will be plenty of time for questions. Now let's begin the MSAA overview so that we can really start getting into the bulk of our training. The purposes of the Multi-State Alternate Assessment, or MSAA, are to ensure that all students are able to participate in an assessment that is a measure of what they know and can do in relation to the grade level state content standards, and to ensure that students with significant cognitive disabilities achieve increasingly higher academic outcomes and leave high school prepared for post-secondary options and to meet requirements for the Every Student Succeeds Act, or ESSA, and the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA, which require the participation of all students in assessments designed to measure student knowledge and ability on grade level content standards. The MSAA assesses two content areas, English Language Arts, or ELA, and Mathematics. ELA comprises both reading and writing. All items, passages, response options, and test administration materials are considered secure. The test is aligned to state content standards and MSAA core content connectors. Students eligible for alternate assessment in grades 3 through 8 and grade 11 will participate in both English language arts and mathematics. Testing time will vary for each student as testing can be paused and resumed based on a student's needs. There are assessment features that can be utilized within the online platform and accommodations can be provided as outlined in the student's individualized education program and consistent with MSAA policies. The test is administered by a trained test administrator who provides a one-to-one -one test administration. The assessment is available in two formats, computer or paper-based. Let's take a closer look at how to customize the format based on what is appropriate for each student. Computer, laptop, or tablet administration is for students who are fairly independent when using a computer or tablet. These students can manipulate a mouse and use a keyboard with some independence. A 
computer administration is considered the standard administration for the test. The paper version administration is for students who cannot yet use a computer or tablet. This includes students who use eye gaze boards and or who have significant motor challenges that prevent them from being able to use a mouse, keyboard, or writing implement. This accommodation may also be helpful for students who are easily distracted by technology. For example, they focus more on clicking the answer options rather than paying attention to the item. Students benefiting from this type of administration would also need the paper version and scribe accommodation documented in their IEP. Hybrid administration, so some computer and some paper, is for students who have some ability to use a mouse or have very limited keyboarding skills. A hybrid administration is appropriate for students who may be able to use the mouse to select their answers but cannot type or need significant assistance. For students receiving this type of administration, accessibility features and test support from both the computer administration and the paper version administration list may use may be used as necessary in order to preserve student independence and promote access to the test. Remember, regardless of the mode of participation, so either computer, paper, or hybrid, all students must, all student responses must be entered and submitted via the online system for session one before an assignment in session two may be determined. The MSAA is stage adaptive and provides students a testing experience that assigns the second session on the assessment based on how the student responds to the items in the first session. So the versions in the second session vary in difficulty and complexity level. Each student will only take the session two version, so A, B, or C, that is assigned to him or her. For example, in ELA, all students are assigned in stage one. Session one contains items from a broad range of levels. Upon completion, the student is directed to stage two or session two via version A, B, or C. Version A contains items at a lower level range of difficulty and complexity. The writing prompt associated with this level utilizes graphic organizers and sentence starters for student work. Version B contains items at a mid-level range of difficulty and complexity. The writing prompt associated with this level utilizes the graphic organizers and a template for student work. Version C contains items at the higher level range of difficulty and complexity. The writing prompt associated with this level utilizes graphic organizers and a template for student work. The mathematics assessment will be presented the same way with student responses from session one directing them to session two with varying levels of difficulty for the assigned version A, B, or C. <clears throat> there are three types of items included in the ELA and mathematics sessions of the test. Selected response or SR items appear in both ELA and mathematics sessions of the test. All directions and materials needed for administering the SR items are in the directions for test administration for the DTA, for the specific content area. Constructed response items, or CR items, are in mathematics only. These items ask the student to develop an answer instead of selecting an answer from answer options. Each item is presented to the student in a standardized scripted sequence of steps culminating in the TA scoring the student's performance using the mathematics scoring rubric and entering the response. Directions and materials needed for administering these items are included in the directions for test administration or your DTA for mathematics. The ELA writing prompt requires the student to produce a permanent product in the response to a prompt. Each writing prompt DTA contains a standardized, scripted sequence of steps for the TA to follow a graphic organizer for students to make notes and plan their essay, and a template to write their essay before it is typed on the computer or uploaded into the system. A mentor text to present to the student as an example of a finished product is provided in grades three, four, five, and 11. Because our writing prompt submissions are hand scored, 
we recommend that you administer the ELA portion of the MSAA first. The Writing Prompt DTAs provide steps to guide students through the writing process using stimulus materials. The process includes topic selection, choosing characters and supporting details, drafting with a graphic organizer, revising, editing, and producing the final story or essay. Each grade span assesses a different writing style. In elementary grade, literary writing is assessed. In middle school, it's explanatory writing. And in high school, we look at argumentative or persuasive writing. Written responses are scored using level and grade specific rubrics. Here's an example of one of the writing rubrics used in scoring. Key dates and context. Now let's look at the important dates. Some of these have passed, but understanding the timing and process is important, so they are still included. As a review, TAMs were automatically delivered to districts based off student enrollment in the MSAA system. Districts received one TAM per five students. The TAMs were delivered to districts in mid-February. Test coordinators or TC users were registered the end of February. All TA users should have had access to the MSAA system by the end of the day on March 1st. If you do not have access by March 4th, contact your test coordinator. Training modules just opened this Monday, March 4th, and administration begins this year on March 18th. If you have a grade reassignment or need a test reopened, the final date to do this is April 30th, and May 3rd is the last day of testing. Please complete one end of test survey by May 3rd. Throughout the MSAA administration, we expect there to be questions. To better flow your questions and receive timely, accurate responses, we have developed the support approach on this slide and have documented it in the TAM. First, we are asking that TAs flow their questions to the first two supports directly available to them, their TC and or their MSAA service center. If further support is needed, the TC will contact Michael, your state MSAA coordinator, for further assistance. The intent of this process is to further improve the timelines for the service center responses, log and track the Q&A coming in from the field, and better inform TCs and Michael, as well as other state MSAA coordinators regarding these communications. The MSAA Service Center is a valuable resource providing technical support via phone and email. When contacting the Service Center, please be prepared to provide as much detail as possible about the issue and the system on which it has occurred. Please include the following. Your contact information, so we need your name, date, district, and school, phone, and email. The student name, if applicable, any error message that's appeared, the operating system and browser information, and information about the network configuration. If you're emailing the service center, please do not include student identifying information. If you have a student-specific issue, please instead call the service center for assistance. The service center is the place to call if you have those how do I questions, and you can't quite find the answer in the TAM, user guides, or the technology requirements. For example, you have trouble logging in and you have an account, you've passed your training exam with 80% or higher accuracy, but still cannot access student test material. Or if you encounter an error or unusual behavior in the MSAA system with your user accounts, accessing tests assigned to students, <clears throat> in incorrect or missing student information, and access to the MSAA test administration training for test administrators and test coordinators. This technical support page, also found in your TAM, provides three categories from which TA should reach out for the support from their TC or their MSAA service center. 
please go ahead and post this page somewhere accessible throughout the testing window as a reference for yourself. And also, please contact Michael Craig, the Assessment Specialist at the Office of the State Superintendent of Education for any additional policy questions. More information can also be found using the web address on this slide. Now let's take a closer look at what's new for 2019. Accidental writing submissions. In an effort to assist TAs and decrease the occurrences of ELA tests being submitted accidentally without the uploading of the student evidence, we've added some additional prompts in the MSAA system. The writing prompt is the last question in session two of the ELA test, and therefore an additional modal shown here has been added. This modal will appear when the student or TA hits the next button on the writing prompt and no uploaded evidence is present. As a reminder, evidence uploads are only available for the ELA writing prompt. Therefore, TAs will not encounter this modal at all on the math test. When this modal appears asking, do you need to upload evidence, you have the option for yes or no. If you select yes, then the evidence upload box will appear and you can use the add evidence option to your student's evidence to the MSAA system. If you select no due to not needing evidence uploaded, for example, if your student's response was entered directly into the MSAA system provided text box, then the normal end of session modal will appear showing you how many out of the total number of items were answered and giving you the option to one, review current session, two, submit your session, or three, save and exit, or pause your test. As a reminder, once a session or test has been submitted, it may not be reopened or unsubmitted. One thing to note about this development is that this new modal that provides the yes, no prompt asking you if you would like to upload evidence will only appear if no evidence has been uploaded. If a TA has already uploaded evidence and they are able to proceed to the expected end of session modal by hitting the next on the navigation bar on the last item of the ELA test. You will notice that the end of session modal says 19 out of 20 items were answered. Uploaded evidence is not reflected in this count. A suggested best practice is for the TA to use the provided MSAA systems text box to annotate students' uploaded evidence. This will assist with the scoring of the student's writing prompt as it will give a comprehensive picture as both the uploaded evidence and the computer responses are reviewed during scoring. Throughout the presentation slides, we will refer to the information that can be found in the Test Administration Manual or the TAM, the MSAA System User Guides for Test Administrators, and the ELA and Mathematics Directions for Test Administration, or the DTAs. These documents are available for download in the MSAA system, the online platform, and in the Washington, D.C. Education Department's MSAA website. So, like I said, there are three main documents required for test administration. The Test Administration Manual, or the TAM, the Directions for Test Administration, or the DTA, and the MSAA Online System User Guide for Test Administrators. The TAM explains the purpose of each required document for test administration in detail, as well as the intended user or users of each document. It provides policies and procedures for TAs and TCs to prepare for the administration of the test, as well as non-secure materials, so those materials that do not need to be returned following the administration. Again, TAM orders were auto-generated based on your state student enrollment as of mid-January. TAMs were shipped at a one to five ratio per school, and they arrived in districts on or about 2-15-2019, so one month prior to the start of administration. TAMs are not available for additional orders, but can be obtained electronically on the MSAA system. 
The directions for test administration or DTAs provide directions and scripts for each item of the test. All test items are included in the DTA, but not all items will be administered to each student. Include details about manipulatives required in order to administer the test items, such as calculators and counters. It includes reference sheets that contain important graphics. It includes scoring rubrics for mathematics, CRs, and all grades. And it provides the writing prompt script, mentor text when applicable, graphic organizers, student response templates, and stimulus materials for the all writing prompts in each grade level ELA DTA. Something new for this year, all aforementioned reference and stimulus materials will be located directly following the front matter in each session of the test. Please note the DTA is a secure document and available only when TAs complete the MSAA online training module and pass the final quiz. Prior to administration of the test, <coughs> TAs should download, print, and review all Session 1 DTAs that will be administered. Again, TAs received access to the DTA starting March 4th after the online test administration training modules are completed and an 80% or better has been attained on the final quiz. TAs may opt to view the DTAs on another computer during administration. Please remember that DTAs are secure materials and must be kept in a secure location given to the TC for shredding after testing, and deleted from all computers after testing. The MSAA System User Guide for Test Administrators describes the MSAA system features and provides TA's step-by-step -step directions to perform the required functions before, during, and after MSAA administration. It provides technical information and troubleshooting tips, plus step-by-step -step instructions to navigate the MSAA online assessment system, such as how to complete the learner characteristic <coughs> inventory, or the LCI, how to pause, resume, and submit a test for scoring, when to contact the MSAA service center, and how to administer the student response check. This user guide is available in the MSAA system. It is found under the resources link toward the bottom of the dashboard as well as on the OSSE website as it is available. The students who are participating in the MSAA have been determined eligible by their IEP team to participate. Please see the participation requirements in the who should take the MSAA section of the TAM. Next, we will cover the responsibilities and training requirements of the TA. Every effort is made to ensure that you're ready to administer the assessment with confidence. As a TA, you must complete all of the MSAA test administration training modules. The customized modules, along with this presentation, will help you prepare for test administration. However, spending actual time with the documents is very important. The modules were made available March 4th and are customized for the specific responsibilities of the TA. They refer to information found in the TAM, the DTA, and the MSAA system user guide for test administrators. All TAs must complete the final quiz with at least the 80% accuracy score to gain access to the directions for test administration. There are currently six required TA training modules. Given feedback from teachers, improvements were made to the modules. The modules will remain short and will include references to the TAM and user guide. Module one covers an MSAA overview. Module 2 is the test design and experience. Module 3 covers navigating the MSAA online assessment system. The fourth module is about completing student information. Module 5 is the accessibility features and accommodations. And lastly, Module 6 covers student response check and the early stopping rule. 
MSAA also provides additional support by way of best practice videos to help TAs with test administration. The four best practice videos include video one that demonstrates the online administration of an item, including how to use the scroll, zoom, and full screen capabilities, as well as the utilization of the hybrid administration. Remember, that means some paper and some computer. Video two demonstrates how to administer the student response check, known as the SRC, and the early, early stopping rule, known as the ESR, while focusing on communication versus selecting the correct answer and uses other devices such as the cheat talk or a single switch. Videos three and four demonstrate how to administer the writing prompt using the directions for test administration, inserting annotations, and how to upload, view, and submit the evidence of a level two or a level three writing prompt. Each video is between 10 and 17 minutes in length and can be viewed as many times as necessary. The videos are an optional resource but are highly recommended for both TAs and TCs. To access the videos, go to the resources on the MSAA Online Assessment System homepage. In addition to the official training requirements, TAs have specific responsibilities that must be completed before, during, and after test administ administration. One of the important responsibilities that the TAs must perform before testing is to complete the student profile for each student to be tested. The student profile includes tabs for demographics, learner characteristics inventory, accommodations, and the student response check. TA's key responsibilities during testing are to follow the directions for test administration when administering the test, provide accommodations as indicated in the student's IEP and the TAM, and maintain test security at all times. After testing, TAs are required to submit the student's test, report test irregularities, and complete the accommodations after test tab and complete one end of test survey and all printed copies of tests, ETAs, and the student work must be given to the test coordinator for secure shredding. The TA checklist is available to you as an assistant in performing and completing all of the responsibilities of your role. Completion of all the test administrator responsibilities before, during, and after test administration is necessary for successful MSAA test administration. Next, we will cover the responsibilities and training requirements of the test coordinator or TC. As noted for the TAs, TCs have very specific training requirements as well. As a TC, you must complete all of the MSAA test coordinator training modules. The customized module, along with this presentation, will help you to prepare for administration tasks. However, familiarizing yourself with the documents is also very important. The modules were made available on March 4th and were customized for specific responsibilities of the TC. They refer to information found in the three documents, the TAM, the directions for test administration, and the MSAA system user guides for test administrators and coordinators. The main difference is that TCs do not, however, have to complete the final quiz. Here is the list of the six TC training modules. Test coordinators also have specific responsibilities that must be fulfilled before, during, and after testing. Before testing, TCs manage test security and confidentiality forms, administration training, technology requirements. During testing, TCs monitor administration, maintain security, report inappropriate test practices or irregularities, and submit tests. And after testing, TCs report inappropriate test practices or irregularities, they submit the test, return barcoded materials to measure progress, and securely shred system printed materials or DTAs. Technology requirements. To 
tablet, or excuse me, operating system. Delivery is supported on desktop computers with the OS versions listed here. So if you're using the operating system for Windows, Windows 7, 8, 8.1, and 10. If you're using a Mac, 10.7 and 10.11. In terms of tablets and devices, there are no new changes for 2019. Tablets and mobile devices are supported for test delivery when using the devices and operating systems listed on this slide. This means that you can use devices, so iPads, Chromebooks, or Windows Surface, with the assessment, as with desktop computers, laptops, and other compatible devices. Please remember to use the sample items and check the devices you plan on using before administering items to the student. Interactive whiteboards, such as smart boards, are also compatible with the MSAA system. We have received feedback from teachers that these interactive whiteboards work especially well as a tool for many students, and we highly encourage their use. As a reminder, this test is a one-to-one -one assessment, so TAs need to make sure if they're using a smart board that other students are not exposed to the content. There are three major browsers, Chrome, Firefox, and Internet Explorer that are supported on the MSAA system. The latest version of each of these browsers is recommended for the test. If you would like to determine the browser you're running and its version, simply navigate to the Google site, whatismybrowser.com. Here you can also upgrade your browser to the latest version from this page for free. If you experience problems with the, with the assessment, log out and then log in with a different browser. Please note it's important Windows does not provide a security update below IE 11. So using a version lower than IE 11 is a security risk. Now we'll look at supports and features. <clears throat> there are several built-in supports on the MSAA system. The entire test can be read aloud and the use of manipulatives is allowed. Pictures and graphics support what is read and the use of models and demonstrations are also built into the item. Common geometric shapes are used and there are smaller numbers on the math chart. You may increase the size of the text and graphics and increase volume through the computer's browser or operating system. Most computers provide a magnification or zoom function. Using the control key and the plus sign key at the same time will increase the size of the text on the screen. Projection systems and video magnifiers via a closed circuit television system may be used to increase size. <clears throat> to activate the assessment features that a student may need, click on the student's name in the lower left-hand corner of the screen in which its item appears. A menu of options will be displayed. You will simply click on the appropriate assessment feature for the student to activate it. The assessment feature will continue to appear for each subsequent item unless it's deselected or the test is paused. When the testing is resumed, the assessment features will need to be selected again for the next item. Answer masking is a feature that allows the student or TA to electronically cover answers and to reveal one answer choice <clears throat> at a time. Simply use the show or hide button. A TA may use masking with a paper administration as well, as long as the TA does not mask answer choices in a way that cues the correct answer. The student or TA may change the screen background or font color based on the needs or preferences of the student by selecting the alternate color theme in the assessment features menu. There are several alternate color theme options for this assessment feature that can be selected. When choosing this feature, 
Graphics may still appear white on the screen. Images in the item will remain white and will not change to the color theme selected. Another assessment feature is a line reader tool. When activated, it draws the student's attention to one or few illuminated lines at a time while shading the remaining screen. The student or TA controls the placement of the line reader with the computer's up or down arrow keys. Magnification is a feature that allows the user to zoom in on and enlarge two lines at a time in the text. The MSAA must be read aloud to the student. An available assessment feature in the system is an audio reader. When the audio reader is selected, the text on the screen and the appropriate alternative text is read by the computer. The embedded audio player reads each line automatically and can be paused, resumed, and made to repeat segments as needed. Item directions, passages, and response options can be read as many times as is reasonable to obtain a student's response to an item. Accommodations. Accommodations are adjustments to the testing situation, test format, or administration of the assessment that do not alter what is being measured. Please note that accommodations must be documented in the student's IEP and used routinely during daily instruction. These are specific accommodations allowed for the MSAA test. All accommodations must be documented in each student's IEP. The use of assistive technology. Please remember to have your TAs test your assistive technology and their students using the sample items prior to actually administering the test. You may also use the paper version of the test. You can access a scribe, so please refer to the TAM Appendix A for the scribe accommodation protocol and you may also communicate using sign language. The next slides will walk us through how to access and use the MSAA system. When new users are added to the system, they receive a welcome email from MSAA Service Center at measuredprogress.org. The email contains information about the MSAA system and the account. At the bottom of the email is a temporary link used to access your account for the first time. When you click the link, it will take you to this screen, confirming that you have logged in for the first time. This link can only be used once. Then set a new password and click Save. The next page will confirm that you've chosen a new password. From this page, you can navigate back to the home page by clicking Dashboard <coughs> on the top left. Please be sure to add the MSAA Service Center at measureprogress.org to your district filter safe list. Once you have clicked on the msaaassessment.org URL, the login page will appear. Here, you will enter your email address and password and click login. Each time you log in after this, you will use the link shown here and the password you chose during your initial login. TAs, you will want to click save and bookmark this page. Once you've logged in, the system opens the dashboard page as your home page. You can navigate within the system using the top navigation bar or by clicking on the blocks at the bottom of the screen. You may access the menu options from the navigation bar. Moving from left to right, the dashboard returns you to the home page or dashboard. The test status summary provides an aggregated snapshot of all your tests your students are assigned to, the number of students assigned to each test and the status of the test. The Students tab provides access to your students and test materials. This includes your DTA and enables you to start the student test on your computer. 
You can also access sample items to practice the online navigation or test students assistive technology devices before launching the actual test. Lastly is the test administration training. Here you'll find the required training module and the required final quiz. Again, moving to the right, the test status summary provides a summary of each student's test to track and monitor testing progress during test administration. Test administrators may only access their own classrooms with students that they are testing. Only test coordinators should see test summary information for all students in the school. When you click on a test status summary from the navigation panel at the top of the page, it will take you to the test status summary view. The test status summary provides the following information. The test name listed by content and grade level, the test window ending date. So this screenshot is a sample and the date is not the same as for this year. The assigned students, so the total number of students in your organization that are assigned to the test. Test status by category, so not started, in progress or paused, in progress or locked, and meaning it's an active session, submitted and closed. Next over is the students page. The list will display from left to right and includes the system generated student ID, the state issued student ID, the organization, the student information, including the first name, last name and the student demographic grade, the test name, so the test that they're assigned, the test status, so this is the status that is the same as that displayed in the test status summary, so not started, in progress with, paused by, submitted by, or closed. The test administrators, the name of the TA who put the test into the current status, and then in the actions drop down, you will have the options to start test, resume the test, print test, print directions for the test administrators, or go to the student profile. Use the students page to access student profile information, including demographics, learner characteristics inventory, accommodations, and the student response check to access test materials like the DTA and to start or resume the student test. New sample items for 2019 MSAA administration are available in the MSAA system. You can find them on the navigation bar or on the bottom of the left-hand side of the login page. All users have access to the same set of sample items. There are sets of items for math and ELA representing each grade band. This is a great opportunity for both you and your students to become familiar with the online administration features. You can access sample items at any time. This screenshot shows you the options of the of print and download from the action button. To view the sample items online, click on the action and select start test. To print the sample items, click on action and select download PDF. The sample items are also available on the OSE. EE alternate assessment page. This is an example of the sample item. Sample item responses are not saved. As you can see, these pages are simply formatted without too much distraction on a page. Previous and next buttons are easily found. To pause, find the save and exit button. To access the list of assessment features, click on this sample item button. Before administering tests to students, the TA is required to complete the student demographic information, the learner characteristics inventory, the accommodations before test, and the student response check. The following slides will guide us through those steps. As TAs, you must provide all information in the four listed system tabs to administer a test located in the student profile area. 
demographics. This tab contains general information about the students, including the school, classroom, and grade assigned to the students. Learner Characteristics Inventory, or LCI, includes a number of learner characteristics. The LCI provides a description of the characteristics of the students who participate in the test. The Accommodations Before Test. In this tab, you may select the accommodations that are documented in the student's individualized education plan, and the Student Response Check, or SRC, allows the TA to launch a content-neutral test to determine if the student's responses can be observed and then respond to the follow-up question. Please refer to the Test Administration Manual, Student Response Check, to determine if the SRC needs to be conducted for the students you will be testing. TAs must review demographic information and complete the LTI Accommodations Before Test and SRC tabs. To do so, click on the students in the top navigation bar to view your student's profile information. The list of your students will appear. If your user account is associated with more than one organization or school, you will select one organization at a time to view students associated with each organization. Now that we have ourselves in the student profile area, let's look more specifically at the student demographics. Find a student in this list and click on the system generated student ID number. This will open up the demographics for that student. The student demographics tab contains general information about the student, including the school grade assigned to the student. The TA must review demographic information for each student. If any changes are needed, contact your test coordinator. The fields on this page cannot be edited and the Save button is not available. Once the demographics have been reviewed, click on the LCI tab. After completing all tabs, click the Save button at the bottom of the screen. Information from the Learner Characteristics Inventory, or LCI, provides a description that includes 16 learner characteristics of the students who participate in the MSAA. They include characteristics like primary language, classroom setting, the use of expressive communication, augmentative communication, oral speech, receptive language, vision, braille, hearing, motor engagement, health issues, and reading. Test administrators must complete all sections in the LCI tab. Once you have clicked on the LCI tab, there are drop-down menus that include descriptions of each characteristic and radio buttons are provided for responses. The TA should preview the fields and obtain the required student level information so that it can be entered accurately into the MSAA system before administering the test. Complete the tab by making selections in each section or field. Be sure to scroll through the entire tab. All fields are required and you must enter a selection for each topic. Only one response per topic is allowed. Please note, for the vision topic, if you select low vision or no functional use of vision, the audio player will include files that describe the visual elements of an item. After you have completed the tab, Click the Save button at the bottom of the screen. The system displays a confirmation about the update on top of the page. Next, click on the Accommodation Before Test tab. The Accommodations Before Test tab must be completed before you start the student test. Select all accommodations that are documented in the student's IEP. You may not choose paper or pencil if it is not in the student's current IEP. If the student does not need any accommodation, please select the last option that reads, check this box if the student does not need any accommodation. After you complete this tab, click on the SRC tab to complete the student response check. The SRC is a task during which a student is asked to demonstrate their preferred modes of communication. A student may use as many or as few communication modes as they are comfortable with 
and use on a daily basis in instruction. Student answers to the items on the student response check are not scored. The purpose of the student response check is to determine if the student demonstrates an observable response mode. This ensures that the student will be able to participate in the assessment and respond to test items. Not all students will need to have the SRC administered, but they already have a consistent mode of communication that is readily understood by the TA. An observable response mode. So in order to meaningfully participate in the MSAA test, students must have an observable response mode. An observable response mode is a predictable and consistent behavior or movement that is able to be understood by a communication partner as intentional communication. Modalities may include the use of eye gaze, reliable gestures, sign language, partner-assisted scanning, scanning on a device, direct selection from an array of choices, activation of a voice output device, the use of speech generating device or use of other reliable means such as demonstrating the intent for the task and responding or sharing information about the stimulus or the test item. Assigning meaningful, assigning meaning to habitual or uncontrollable motor movement and vocalization without communicative intent are not considered response mode. It is recommended that the SRC be administered more than one time during the testing window before the early stopping rule is applied. The TA may want to consider changing the time of day, day of the week, or location of testing when administering the SRC multiple times. The student response check is a three question content neutral task used to ensure that the TA can clearly identify which answer a student chooses for a selected response item. You must conduct an SRC if you're not certain that the student will communicate an observable response to test items. Unobservable student responses will not permit the TA to enter a student's response in the MSAA system. You will not conduct an SRC if you're certain that the student has an observable mode of communication so that you may enter a student's response in the MSAA system with confidence. You must observe the student's response to the task using each mode of the response listed as appropriate. For example, if a student does not use assistive technology, you will not ask the student to use an AT device to demonstrate this mode of response. As always, please use your professional judgment when conducting the SRC. If you observe the student use, using a mode of response when responding to a task, you will check this mode of response on the SRC form in the student's profile in the MSAA system. An important note, the use of hand over hand or any physical prompt is not considered an observable response because the student is not indicating his or her answer choice in an independent way. Student response check, so your computer administration. Click on the SRC tab and click Start Computer, Re Start computer Student Response button if a student can indicate a response to an item by using the mouse to select an answer, verbalizing answers, gesturing or pointing to an answer, or using assistive technology to indicate answers. For students who communicate using gestures, eye gaze, or other modes of communication that make using the computer difficult, conduct the SRC using the paper version. Click the pencil and paper student response check button to access the copy of the SRC for printing. When the SRC begins on the computer, you and the student will see an introduction to the SRC with some general directions about how to proceed. Click the next button at the bottom of the page to proceed to and through the SRC item. After the student completes the SRC, you will be returned to the SRC page within the MSAA system. Check all that apply to complete the SRC tab. The verification question will appear under each checked statement. Select yes or no to proceed. 
This slide shows the student response check in the MSAA system. A couple key takeaways to highlight. Remember, best practice, for any student who does not have a consistent observable response mode, the TA must complete the SRC by checking other. No response must be added to the text box in addition to providing a brief explanation. If the early stopping rule is determined appropriate, the TC must close both the ELA and mathematics test. More information on the SRC is located in the TAM under the implications of student response check section, as well as in the user guide for test administrators. If while administering the computer version of the SRC, the student inadvertently records a response, please contact your state PC. A student's test may be closed by this PC only if the criteria for the early stopping rule is met. If the student did not display an observable response during the SRC and the TA administered the first four items in, the, in either the mathematics or reading and the student's response was not observable for any of the first four test items, the test may be closed by the TC. If the student responded with an incorrect answer, the incorrect answer is considered a response and the TA must continue to administer the rest of the assessment. If a student withdrew or is no longer eligible, the TA must contact the TC and the state MSAA corporate. There are a few best practices that will optimize your and your students' testing experience. Double check your IEPs for allowable accommodations. Review the TAM, put sticky notes on the pages you need to refer back to, post pages with key dates and phone numbers in a visible part of your work area. With your DTA, pre-read the DTA and add sticky notes, highlight or make notes for yourself of administration requirements that you need to remember. This includes alternative text that is required, stimulus materials needed for the writing prompt, each item has a written script that dictates the way the item is administered. Review the script and practice administering items. In terms of cutouts, pre-cut all of the necessary materials before sitting down with your students. In terms of tactile graphics or object replacement, ensure these materials are pre-made and readily available before you sit down with your students. Emulate the way materials are presented on a daily basis in your classroom and watch your best practice videos. These videos provide you with insight on how to administer properly. Put them to use. Now let's talk about the directions for test administration. This is the main document you'll be using throughout administration. The DTA provides specific instructions and exact wording to be used for administration of the test items in ELA and mathematics. Each DTA provides guidelines for how to present the items to the student and the materials needed to prepare for the test. Prior to administration of the test, test administrators should download, print, and review all Session 1 DTAs that will be administered. After the online test administration training modules are completed and an 80% has been attained on the final quiz, access to the DTAs is permitted. TAs may opt to view the DTAs on another computer during administration, so please remember that DTAs are secure material and must be kept in a secure location, given to a TC for shredding after testing and deleted from all computers after testing. A little more on the function of the DTA. So TAs should refer to the TAM and DTAs for all directions regarding test administration. Each DTA is specific to the form of the test that is assigned to the student. And you can download the DTAs from the action button in the MSAA online assessment system at www.msaaassessment.org. From the DTA, you must read the directions, passages, items, and answer option text exactly as written using a consistent rate of reading and a tone of voice as appropriate. 
please be familiar with and utilize the alternative text as appropriate. Alternative text is written in italics and appears in brackets in your GPA. Two types of alternative text are provided in the DTA. Alternative text for all students includes standardized descriptive statements for tables, charts, graphs, timelines, and math flow to be read aloud to all students. Alternative text for students who are blind or have visual impairments includes descriptions and statements for tables, charts, graphs, and other graphics necessary for appropriate interaction with the item. As an example, an answer option that is a graphic with no accompanying text or a graphic that provides contextual clues for a sighted student. If the alternative text for the student who are blind or have visual impairment is not read by the computer, the TA must read this text aloud to the student as indicated in the DTA. Remember, the alt text will always be bracketed and directs the teacher to read the description exactly as it is written. Any script the TA must read aloud to the student is shown here in black. Any actions the TA must perform are in gray italics. Any alternative text for students with visual impairments or to be read for all students will be in brackets, gray italics, and should be read aloud as necessary. Mathematics, whether or not a calculator is allowed on an item will be identified in the beginning. If the TA is reading aloud to the student, the script is given in black. And the action the TA should perform are in gray italics, and this includes reading the alternative text as appropriate. And alternative text for students is in brackets with gray italics and should be read aloud as necessary. In this section, we will cover how to locate, start, and resume a test or perform other test actions available for each student in the MSAA system. So you're ready to begin when you verify that you have all of the right technology necessary for testing, all students have gone through some practice items, you have finished your training modules and passed the final quiz with 80% accuracy or higher, and you've completed the student demographics, LCI, accommodations before test, and the student response check. And you've downloaded all of the directions for test administration. As we've already reviewed, DTA provides you with the specific uh, instructions for administration of a particular test in ELA or mathematics. Each DTA provides guidelines for how to present the item to the student, the exact wording of the items to be used, and the materials needed to prepare for the test. Here are the steps to access the DTA. Select students from the navigation panel at the top, or click on the button from the main page. Locate the student test you wish to start and click the Actions button. The options that appear under the Actions button will be dependent on the status of the student progress with the test. Select directions for test administration. You need to have Adobe Reader installed on your computer. Confirm the correct student and mark the test selected. Click on directions for test administration. Elect the DTA sessions to download and click download the DTA. The PDF document will open. Check to see if the student's grade assignment is correct. Then you can print it or view it on a second computer during test administration. Each TA must only have one student test open at a time. Always pause and save a student's test when taking a break. The test is easy to resume where you left off. Should a student's test be left open and you have opened another test, the first test may be stalled as in progress and locked test status. A call to the help desk is then warranted. Here's how to start a test. Select 
students from the top navigation bar. Locate the student test you wish to start and click the Actions button. The options that appear under the Actions button will be dependent on the status of the student's progress with the test. Select Start Test. This option appears if the test has not been started by the student or TA on the computer. This option will not be available if the test status is in progress or locked. Remember, this is a time where you contact the help desk to unlock a test. Confirm the student name, grade, and test. If the student and test are correct, select the Begin Test Now button. If the wrong student was selected, click the Cancel button to return to the student's page. Repeat process to find the correct student. Remember, only one test may be open at a time. Always save and exit a student's test when taking a break. If the student needs a break from the test, whether for a few minutes or a few days, click on the Save and Exit button. This will bring up a prompt to confirm that you would like to save the student responses and exit out of the test. A confirmation message indicates that all the student's answers have been saved and that you may return to the test at a later time. You will be returned to the student page. When, the, when you return to the test, you will return to the same item. The writing prompt submission is slightly more layered than the selected response item. There are three ways to submit a student's writing response. The student may type directly into the MSAA system. If the student has the scribe accommodation in their IEP, the TA may transcribe the student's response into the MSAA system or the student's evidence must be uploaded into the MSAA system via a webcam or scanner. Teachers must annotate the student's writing to capture the student's thoughts so that scorers may score the writing prompt appropriately. Evidence that scorers cannot read or understand often results in a lower score. Any uploaded images of stimulus materials other than the student response template will be disregarded for scoring purposes. Please keep these considerations in mind for the writing prompt. Annotation is key. Annotate the student's writing response when it includes inventive spelling, hard to read penmanship, or use of symbols. Refer to Appendix A in your TAM for more details on education. On annotation. Upload only what needs to be uploaded to the MSAA system. Only the final response template needs to be uploaded. Do not include idea cards, drafts, pictures of communication boards or devices, student selections from pictures. If your student uses a, co a communication board or device, please upload only a picture of the final writing product produced with the device and do not upload pictures of students. Review and review again information about uploading writing evidence. Refer to the MSAA system user guide for test administrators for specific directions regarding how and when to capture and upload writing evidence. I will walk you through that process now. When you're administering the writing item, an additional button will be displayed in the toolbar at the bottom of the page. This is the Upload Evidence button. Click on this button to begin the evidence upload process. A pop-up window provides you with two options to capture evidence. Choose either the webcam or an attached scanned file. TAs need to type the student response into the computer as well as upload the evidence or the online system will not register a completed test item. The system will display that a test item is incomplete. A file upload prompt will appear. Click Choose Files or drag and drop evidence files into the Upload Files prompt. From there, select the file or files that contain the scanned images and click Open. The file names will display in the upload prompt and can be viewed by clicking the file name. Click the upload button when you're ready. The 
the system will provide you with a confirmation of a successful upload. Click OK. You will return to the uploaded evidence screen and the files you uploaded will now be listed. These files can be reviewed, replaced, or deleted. As mentioned in the new for 2019 section, at the beginning, a new upload evidence confirmation modal has been added to prevent accidental writing submission. To review, if a student does not have any uploaded evidence present for their writing prompt, then when the next button is clicked, a prompt will come up asking, do you need to upload evidence? If yes is clicked, then the evidence upload box will appear, allowing the TA to upload evidence as seen here on the left. If no is clicked, then the typical end of session modal will appear, allowing the TA to proceed with options to review current session, submit, or pause or save and exit as seen here on the right. As a reminder, if evidence has already been uploaded to the MSAA system, then no uploaded evidence confirmation will appear. At the end of each session, a prompt will notify you that you have completed the session. This modal will show the count of how many items have been answered out of the total number of items in that session. Options are available to review your current session, which allows you to return to the items in that session. Submit session. Once submitted, session cannot be unsubmitted and the items cannot be returned to. Or pause or save and exit, which will allow you to not submit session, but exit test and return to it at a later time. Once submit session is clicked, a confirmation prompt will appear asking you to confirm that you want to submit the session and move to the next session. Please note that once you move to the next session, you cannot return to the previous session. And as a reminder, your accidental submission safeguard is, it will be found in EL, ELA session two. When you've reached the end of the test, this prompt will appear. It will ask you if you would like to review your current session, submit your test, or save and exit. If you click Submit, it will ask you to confirm before submission. All tests that are started in progress must be submitted. TAs will submit what the student did complete. Submit test as is. The TA must page through the test, click on Next until the Submit screen appears, submit the test, and do not close the test. After closing or submitting the test for each student, you must enter the accommodations that each student used during the test as well as complete the end of test survey. TAs must enter the following required information into the MSAA system after submitting or closing the ELA or mathematics test for each student. Accommodations after test, after submitting both tests, and the end of test survey after submitting all your students' tests. As a note, following the administration, the TA will record in the accommodations after test tab the accommodations students actually used during the test, not the accommodations that were made available to the student. Access each student's profile to complete the accommodations after test. Click on the accommodations after test tab. Select the accommodation that the student actually used during the test. More than one option may be selected. If the student did not use any accommodation, please select the last option. Click the save button when finished. An end of test survey has been developed to learn from the experience of each TA administering the MSAA test. After the TA has completed testing for all students, each TA completes only one end of test survey. Please refer to the MSAA system user guide for test administrators 
for specific information to complete the end of test survey. The survey is essential in providing additional data about how the test functions for the students with unique and varying needs, student engagement with the test, and the opportunity to learn the content represented by the state content standard. Completed survey responses support potential revisions and refinements of the MSAA for subsequent years and provide information that can be tracked over time. To access the survey, go to students and then go to any student with a submitted test. Click on the action button in the student's row with the submitted test. Then click go to survey. The end of test survey launch screen opens. Read the instructions provided on the launch page and then proceed to the survey. Each TA must complete only one end of test survey. Testing integrity, appropriate and inappropriate test practices. Maintaining testing integrity is critical to ensuring accurate, valid, reliable, and timely information about student academic performance. All TAs and TCs are responsible for ensuring that testing integrity is maintained before, during, and after testing in compliance with their state test security protocols and procedures. Secure testing environments must be maintained. TAs and TCs must sign and submit their state-specific required test security agreements. Both TAs and TCs need to recognize inappropriate test practices. Both TAs and TCs are responsible for immediately reporting any violation or suspected violation of test security or confidentiality. TCs and TAs must ensure that all aspects of the MSAA test will be maintained in a secure manner. Items are for the exclusive use of testing and are not to be used for instruction, shared emails, copied or distributed in any manner. To do so is a test irregularity and a violation of test security. The MSAA test is usually administered online to students individually in their classroom or a similar environment. To maintain the integrity of all materials related to the test, TAs must administer the test only through the password protected MSAA online assessment system and restrict access to the test online and in print, as well as ensure a quiet test taking environment that does not allow other students to hear the responses of a student who tested. If the TA is administering the paper version of the MSAA, there must still be a secure test environment. When Entering student responses into the password protected MSAA online assessment system, care must be taken to ensure the items are not viewed by other students or those who are not certified, licensed, and trained test administrators. Ensuring a quiet test taking environment void of distractions and one that is not to permit other students to hear the item responses of the student being tested is critical. A secure and comfortable space could be a corner of a classroom where the TA and the student can work uninterrupted and in privacy. Other students may remain in the classroom but cannot interfere with the testing as it is taking place. Additional staff may be required in order for the TA to focus on the student being tested. Review the assessment features and accommodations the student may need. Make sure the same computer is using a com for computer administration, laptop or tablet, or other device is available for testing. This ensures that security of materials is maintained. The MSAA system is an online test, and that means that all test materials are available through the MSAA system. Secure handling protects the integrity, validity, and confidentiality of the test, items, prompts, and student results. To maintain the integrity of both online access and printed materials related to the test, 
PCs and TAs must maintain the control of both the online access to the items and any printed test material, including test reference pages, scoring rubrics, and test forms. The TAM provides specific instructions for the test for the secure handling of the online and printed test materials under the heading Test Security and Test Irregularity. TAs and TCs must review this information and adhere to these practices and state policies. Let's take a look. Maintain all printed test materials in a secure locked location. Protect secure materials from view of other students, teachers, parents, school staff, or other individuals. This includes logging out of the MSAA online assessment system and closing the browser after each testing session. Do not duplicate, reproduce, or share items or other secure test materials. Give all printed test items or other printed material to the TC for secure shredding. Delete any test materials, items, and information from the computer and any assistive technology used by the students after testing is complete. Additional irregularities include failing to sign and submit your state security agreement to the district, applying the early stopping rule for any reason other than the lack of an observable response, failing to use the DTA to administer the items, changing the wording of test directions, test items, answer options, or any text as it is written in the DTA, using any materials not indicated in the DTA, providing students a preview of the test at any time, or providing answers, clues, or cueing to the students in advance of or during test administration. More test irregularities include manipulating test materials in a way that hints at a correct or incorrect answer or reduces answer options, changing a student's answer, using any of the MSAA test materials, including items or the DTA for instructional, for instructional purposes, sharing test items, test content, or test forms, either written or verbally, or through photography, phone cameras, recording devices, note-taking, or any other manner with colleagues, other staff members, students, parents, media, or the general public, leaving the MSAA online assessment system unattended while logged into the test or the DTA, or administering the test by a staff member who has not completed the online training modules and passed the final quiz. Monitoring test procedures and reporting inappropriate test practices or irregularities are outlined in the state law policy and policy. Each person participating in the state assessment program is directly responsible for immediately reporting any violation or suspected violation of test security or confidentiality. TAs and other staff must notify their test coordinator if they witness or become aware of an inappropriate test practice or suspect one has occurred, and TCs must follow their state procedures. State Professional codes of ethics and state law provide the guidelines for determining the consequences for any irregularity. This visual provides you with the chain of events that occurs when there is a test irregularity. The irregularity gets reported to the test administrators to, by test administrators to the test coordinators. It is then reported by the school test coordinator to the district test coordinator as applicable, and finally it's reported by district test coordinators to the state test administration and security committee as appropriate. Next step. Your list of next steps is right here. So please go ahead after this presentation and download and read your two materials the test administrators will use, the test administration manual and the MSAA online assessment system user guide for test administrators. You'll need to complete all six of the test administrator modules as well as the best practice videos 
And finally, take and pass the MSAA Test Administration Training for Test Administrators final quiz. I'm going to go ahead and ask if there's any questions that need to be processed at this time, Sarah or Riley. Are we good? We're good. Okay. So I'd like to, as a special bonus, go ahead and um, introduce Sarah McCain. And she is going to provide us with a brief uh, walkthrough. Um, of the system. Everyone, bear with me while I get ready to share my screen. Oops. Okay, just let me know when it's visible. We're going to show you that MSA system login page. Share? Okay. So for today's demo, I went ahead and created um, a mock school in our sample state just to customize it to the training. So my user, I'm right here on the login page. I'm just going to clear out that message. Um, the first thing I want to show you is if you are in need of getting your password reset, you can click on this prompt here, and it will just go ahead and ask you to um, enter your email address, and then when you hit email new password, an auto-generated link will be sent to you where you can click on and it will allow you to walk you through the stages of and the steps to enter and create a new password. Okay, just going to log in. So this is the assessment um, website that you will want to save, www.msaassessment.org. Okay, and when you log in, again, if there's any banners that are up, uh, they will be there to clear them. You can just go ahead and hit the exit bar. The first thing I want to show you is down in the bottom left corner, we have a resources section. So these are some quick links to the sample items, the technology requirements, get help, um, and the test administration training. And you get into some of our support documents, the test administration user, or administrator user guide, the test coordinator user guide, as well as electronic version of the TAM. And there's also a quick link to the best practice videos. Um, so any of these, you can just right click and open link in a new tab, and it will go ahead and do that. And then you can just access it that way. Okay. So this is all found on your dashboard, as well as some support numbers for our MSA Service Center. So here you see we've got their phone number listed and the email address. So if you're ever in the platform um, and you have any issues, you can just go ahead back to your dashboard page where you land when you first log in and you have these quick resources. So as TAs, what I'm currently showing is what we refer to as your navigation bar up here in the blue. Um, and you'll see it, it highlights in a lighter blue as whatever page you're on. So just working our way across, we have uh, the test status summary, which Megan had showed you some screenshots in the presentation earlier, but we'll just take a quick look at it. So again, here you have um, the test name. One thing to point out is just because ELA and MAP are separate tests, you'll see you have um, each grade listed twice, one for the ELA grade three and one for the, e, uh, the math grade three. And that's just simply because um, it's very, it, it, the reality is that students may be submitted for one content area and then they'll be in a different status for the other. So they're broken out by test. Uh, we have the test window ending date. So we've got our end of admin, March, May 3rd, 2019. And then for this sample, um, the representation is pretty small. I only uploaded about 15 students to the whole district. Um, so we see that we've got the number of assigned students and then their status. Uh, because we're in pre-admin right now and the tests aren't live, everyone's going to be in not started. However, um, if it if a test has been started once admin is live, they would be in progress. Um, and we have in progress pause, which means that the student and the TA have begun testing, but they're just have saved and exited and they'll come back to it at another time, which is completely acceptable. And then we also have this, air, this header of in progress lost, and that is an active section. So a session. So if a TA and a student are currently working together, 
um, the task will be locked. That is totally acceptable as long as that TA is actually working with the student and that's expected behavior because only one test session can be active at a time for a student and a TA should only be administering um, one test session at a time for one student because it's a one-on-one -on -one administration. That is kind of a safekeeping so another session isn't accidentally launched. Where it does become an issue is there's those times where a student um, or a TA may not gracefully exit the, the system or there may be a power outage where it kills the browser or the system, um, their computer reboots on them. In that case, it, it puts them in a lock status and it's recognizing that the session was active, um, but the TA is, uh, is not currently working with the student. So in that case, you can call the MSA Service Center or reach out to your state coordinator who will um, assist you with unlocking the test and get you up and running. We also have submitted, so that's for any test sessions that have been completed and the TA has submitted the student's test. And then we have um, a column for closed. And that's, again, the only acceptable reason to close the student's test is if they meet the criteria for the early stop. Um, the other thing to note is there is the ability to download this. So this will just export this record um, into Excel so that you can look at it. And if you are a TA, um, for demo purposes, I made my TA user associated to multiple schools. Um, so you can just, if you have an or multiple organizations that you're associated with, which sometimes happens, you can just use this drop down under the organization field. And you'll see that it's updated because now I'm in my middle school, so I don't have any grade three or four students, and I'm starting with my five, so it's updated. Okay, and then moving across, so that's the test status summary page. And then uh, moving across our navigation bar is the students page. Again, this is your drop down. It will be defaulted if you only have one organization, you're fine there, but if you do have um, multiple orgs that you're monitoring and associated to in your account. You can just use that to toggle between them. There is the search um, function in the students page. So I'll just show you here if we do um, demo 03 and we hit apply. Now I'm isolated just to seeing that particular student. Um, again, it's important to note that each student will appear twice in your student roster, and that's because they're, it's by test assignment. So we have um, this Demo 3 student. The first one is for their ELA um, Grade 4 Form 1 test, and then we have the second, second row, which is their math test, because this is also, we'll get to how you start the test. Um, to clear your filters, to go back, you would just go ahead Okay, clear filters, and now you have a full list of students that are in your associated organization or school. Um, so just working our way across this chart, we have the student ID. This is system generated. Because MSAA is a multi-state um, assessment, we have the system will make a unique identifier and assign each student as they're added to the system their own ID. And that's just to ensure that in the event your state issued ID were duplicated and found in another state, there would be no confusion about whose test is which. So that's why um, the system generated ID really becomes the student ID. Um, and you can click on this link to access their student profile, which it will come back to. So just working our way across, we have um, your what you'll be used to seeing, which is your student ID state issued. And then you have the organization, so this says uh, which school that they are assigned to. And then you have your student information. Mine are a little clunky because this is for demo purposes, so they're kind of demo students, but they would be read a little cleaner and be your student's first and last name, and then followed by their grade. Then you have their test name, so we kind of already went over that. OP stands for operational, so it's the operational ELA grade three test. And then the second row um, in the test name is the identified form. So um, each grade and form has, e sorry, each <laughs> test and content area have three forms. So um, if they're all in the school, they will all have the same form. All right, and then the test status. So right now this is kind of stagnant on my end because everybody's in not started, but I think Megan had some nice screenshots where it showed submitted by, submitted by or in progress with. So there are different test statuses that are available, but right now because of the time of year, they're all in not, start, not started. Um, and then our test administrator column is currently blank, but the minute a test is um, launched with a student, it would then 
put in that TA, the TA's name that's linked to the account. So it would read in progress with and then have um, Sarah McCain or whatever the name is of the TA. And then we have the actions option. So this is where uh, Megan talked about how you would really start accessing the student's test and um, some of the other options. So currently we have the option um, to go to the student profile. So again, we're gonna do, I'll show you both ways to do that and we'll walk through the student profile tabs. Um, you also have the option to open the test in a PDF. So if we click on this, um, this brings up that confirmation. So it says paper-based paper administration of a test. Um, you want to confirm that you did in fact click on the correct student's action menu. So it has a student name to confirm as well as the test that you want to be an ELA. This is also um, the prompt for the confirmation that a paper, a paper test is an approved accommodation for the student. So if the student has uh, paper test or paper version uh, in their IEP, you just go ahead and check that. And once you check that box and prompt, your um, session printing becomes enabled. So you just go ahead and select your session one, and then now the download paper test is available. So you would go ahead and click that. Um, once, even, even if a student is taking a paper test, just to reinforce, all student responses need to be entered into the MSA system. And upon submitting session one into the MSA system, the system will route the student to the appropriate version of their session two. Um, so once your session one is done and completed, the system will tell you which version of session two the student's been assigned, and you can just come back here and select the respective version and download just that paper test. Okay. Also under the options um, is the directions for test administration. So these are the electronic copies of the DTAs. So again, it's the same confirmation we're used to when we just saw in the paper version of the test. You have the student name and the test name and then the session printing modal that you can just go ahead and select. And this is just um, session printing is good to use so that you're just isolating the specific um, secure material that you need and not printing in excess. So once test administration is live, you will also see the option to start tests. And as Megan spoke about, once a test is submitted, you'll also have your link to go to this end of test survey. Um, if a student's test is paused and in the pause status, the TA will also be able to um, have an option to resume the test from this action menu. So this, the student's page um, and these students' action menus are really kind of um, the navigation system for navigating through the MSA system and administering a test. But prior to test administration, um, student profiles need to be completed. So we're just gonna go into this first um, student profile and, and show you the tabs that we had previously seen some screenshots and slides on. There's two ways to enter a student profile. You can either click the link here in the student ID um, system generated field, or you can go to that actions menu. Okay. So now we're here. The first, um, the first tab is demographics. This will be all auto-generated for you for, uh, based on your students adding. It is important for TAs to land here and to review all the content. We want to make sure the student ID is correct, their name is correctly captured, um, gender is optional, date of birth, and the grade. Um, so we ask that TAs look here. However, um, you'll see this note that if you find any edits that need to be made, you just need to reach out to your test coordinator. Their accounts have the ability to edit the section, um, but TAs do not. So it's just a good place to check, do a little um, review of it, make sure everything's accurate. The other thing um, that's good to notice is note here is the grade. The grade that is in the student's profile is what's going to determine which test is assigned to them. So if by chance um, the student was uploaded to the MSA system with the wrong grade, they're going to be assigned to the wrong grade levels test. So you can work with the service center and your state lead to get those um, rectified and corrected. Your test coordinator can correct the grade and we can get the correct test, grade levels test assigned. Okay, then working our way across. And these are what we refer to as all those pre-admin activities. Once a TA um, has access to the system and has done their training, they can get in and start completing their student profile before test, test admin goes live on March 18th. So this is that LCI tab, uh, the Learner Characteristics Inventory. There are 16 questions and they all need to be um, completed. So you would just, you know, there's a variety of drop downs um, as well as radio buttons, 
So you just go ahead and walk through your student's profile. For demonstration purposes, I'm just going to kind of click away. Um, that vision is where um, there's that trigger for the alt text if a student needs it here. So you would just go ahead and obviously take more care than I am, but respond to all of your questions based on your students. And then you save. All right, you get a confirmation up here in green that it's been updated and you see that all my answers are selected. So then you would go ahead and move on to the accommodations before test. And again, these are all the accommodations that are um, going to be selected that the students are eligible to receive. So um, this is where we have the before testing. So you want to go ahead and mark any that are appropriate as far as in the student's IEP. Um, if they don't have any, you can go ahead and check this box and save. Okay. And then finally, we have the SRC, the student response check. So it's important just to stress that every student's profile needs this SRC tab completed. That's not to say that every student needs to have um, an SRC test conducted. If a TA just has been working with a student and knows what their observable response is and their modes of communication, they simply just scroll down and go to this response modes and go ahead and check how their student's going to respond. It's the instances where a TA is not 100% sure and doesn't know how the student's going to communicate with them and provide their observable response. That's when these SRC checks um, become a necessity. So you go ahead and follow. Um, you have the access to do a computer version or um, download a paper version. So you can do either or for a student. We recommend using um, whatever you, the typical mode of instruction is with your student. Um, but you can go ahead and do both. So um, Megan went in depth through the SRC process and the early stopping rule, so I'm not going to go through that again, but this is just how you would access the online version as well as the paper version to conduct the SRC test. Or um, you would go ahead and answer your response modes for your student. The one thing that is good to note is if an SRC is needed and the TA goes ahead and administers that and our recommendation is to do that at least twice throughout the admin. Um, it's good to vary times of day, days of the week, give some space in between so that you know you're not just catching that student on a particularly off day. Um, but if you've conducted the SRC multiple times and you're feeling and you followed through the protocol and you don't have an observable response, a best practice and what we ask you to do is to use this other field and just go ahead and enter something like a no response mode and then a brief explanation, SRC given on March 16th and April 29th. That is um, very valuable information for your state coordinator to receive. They'll get that, that documentation in their student results file. Um, so it's insanely helpful to have that information and just to know that as a TA, um, you and the student have kind of given it your best attempt and captured when those SRCs were attempted. Okay. The other thing to note is um, if you, the other category can totally be used for as technology is always ever changing and new devices, um, we recognize that we may not have captured every device that a student uses in a, every kind of response mode. So the other could be simply used um, if you have a, a device that was not listed here, you could use that and enter it in here. Okay. And then you just save that. So at that point, um, you've completed your pre-admin activities for in the student profile. We do see we have these accommodations after test, but that's simply where you come back after you've administered the test to the student and record what they actually use during testing. Okay. So then moving ourselves across, we've got the sample items. We'll take a quick look at these. These are also a good area where we can show some of the assessment features that are built into the online test. Um, the one thing that is important to note is that we do have um, download DTA, the sample items, because sample items are really an opportunity for the TA and the student to practice in the real, as close to real um, test environment. We recommend and it's expected that TAs download the DTAs. 
and that will just be to your browser and you'll open it up and you have all the all the sample um, item sample test DTA so that you can print those out or view them electronically and you will have the real look and feel of what it's like to use a DTA to administer a test to a student. So you want to make sure you get your sample DTAs. There's also some quick links to some best practice videos, specifically the level two writing prompt and the level three writing prompt. And there's also the respective writing rubrics for those um, videos for you to look on with. So here are the different sample items that are available. Um, so you would just go here to the actions, the respective one, and you can either start test, which is the online version, or download the PDF. So we will go into, it says grade six through eight math sample items. So this is an example of what a test item would look like. Um, the one thing I'll show you here that is pretty important is this gear down on the bottom in the navigation bar is how you would access your assessment features. So we talked about these earlier, but it's nice just to demo them. So this is how you can do alternate color themes. Okay, and once selected, um, the assessment features will stay on until either deselected or the item is, the test is uh, saved and exited. Upon resuming, you would need to reactivate and turn these back on. Okay, we have answer masking. So we see that when that's turned on and initiated, answers are grayed out and you click on the show to unhide it. So that way, if you want to isolate and present the student limited um, responses, you can do that. You can keep them both unhidden or you can go back. It's good when there's three or more and you want to start eliminating. Okay. We also have um, audio player or the system read aloud. So once that is turned on, um, you see that the controls came up so that you can start playing that. We have line reader. Um, so again, this allows the student and the TA to kind of control um, where the attention is drawn to and highlights so that you can start and then provide answer choices. And then we also have magnification so that um, if you scroll and then to enlarge, you would just click and it will go through the different options. So it's kind of a constant enlarge and adjust to make sure that you're keeping it in focus and then ultimately if it, you click through um, five or so times it will go back to the normal font. Multiple ones can be um, initiated at the same time. So this shows that we've got um, the answer masking and line reader on. And then if you find that they're distracting for the student, they can just go ahead and be turned off. Um, navigating through, you would, this is an example of um, where a rubric is used and the TA is working with the student and then recording and told how to score so they either get it marked correct or incorrect and then you hit next to navigate through. Here's a great example of a horizontal um, answer response option. So instead of presenting the two options vertically, they're side by side. That helps to reduce scrolling. Um, you have the option, so previous and next, if you'd like to go back. The sample item tests um, are limited in items, um, but you can also bookmark if you want to, if the student wants to come back to that at a later time. And then the item list brings up a summary and just more of a list form so it lets you jump to the specific item. So we see our item two was flagged by the student or bookmarked and we want to go back. We can go ahead and click back there and we're back there and the student can decide if that was the correct answer or they want to change it. Um, this is also a good summary. Uh, it flags any items that were not answered and that's a quick way so you don't have to click next or previous to get to it. Okay. Full screen mode just um, removes Kind of any it expands it to the full screen and then the option to get help will get bring up the service center and then save and exit um, so we see this is in every test this is how you properly pause the test and you can save wait the progress exit it and resume it back at any time okay so you just get a modal are you sure you want to save uh, your test and come back later you can either cancel out or hit save and exit 
you get the confirmation that's been saved. Um, sample items test because they're limited in items and they can be reused, uh, they don't save progress. So the next time we were to go on that, we even though we saved an extra, <coughs> no answers are actually restored. And then the test administration training is the last tab in the TA navigation bar. Um, and this is just where you would land uh, to see all of your training modules that are required and to access the PD quiz. So in this case, I've already done this as um, this demo user, so they're shown as complete. There's also these best practice videos, which are not required, but are a great resource. Um, and we have the four videos. I believe they're about 10 minutes in duration, and we've got a lot of positive feedback that they have been a great resource for folks to use. All right. So that is pretty much what I have for demoing the system and what it would look like for TA users. I'm not sure if there's any questions that have been submitted. Right, I was just looking at the questions that are being submitted. It looks like they're being worked through. So I think um, at this point, we'll probably, we'll, Megan, um, Riley, and I will stay on. If folks have questions that they want to submit, feel free. We'll continue to stay on and answer them. But I think I'll hand it back over to Megan in case she has anything else to close out with. Thanks, Sarah. Just as a wrap up, I want to thank everyone for uh, attending this PA training. Um, and the recording um, and the slides will be posted to the OSFE site. Um, so we'll go ahead and get that up there just as soon as we can um, following the presentations today. We have an afternoon session as well. So we'll go ahead and, and work on that following that presentation. So thank you very much. We'll go ahead and stay on.